No. Meeting is being live streamed. Got it. Lord, we love you this day. We thank you for the Lord's day. We thank you. We can gather together in your name. We ask that you would touch us and heal us and fill us again with your spirit. Lead us while wow. guide us. We are grateful for your love. We ask for your perfect peace on Israel. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bring blessing to us this day. We'd ask that souls be saved. Is that you or me? Please be with us in this study. Help us with this study. Uh, Amen. Okay, so, so here we are. Yeah. So uh, yesterday, yesterday Hamas attacks Israel. Hundreds killed and thousands wounded. And of course, Israel has to respond because they're Israel. I got a I got a voice in the background. I don't know what it is. Um, it's eight o'clock. There you go. That might be you. Me? Uh, I can't make the sound go away in my background here. Um, okay, so yesterday, uh, Israel, Hamas attacked Israel, and Israel is retaliating, and uh, instantly people thinking about Ezekiel 38 and 39, and yes, it's a reasonable chapter for you to read in light of that, but then again, uh, we had a seven-day war 15 years ago, uh, and we have... Uh, we have numerous conflicts around the world. So the question is, has the gospel gone to every nation yet? And the answer is both yes and no. Uh, I got an echo here. I'm sorry about that. Um, has the gospel gone to every nation? The answer is yes and no, because it's gone to every nation, but it hasn't gone to every ethnic. So are we in the last days? Yes. But... Uh, are we, is this the war to end all wars? I don't know. So, you know, don't panic, pray, be be, uh, be alive in the spirit, share the gospel with those around you. But I don't, I don't know. Um, right. And so we'll just go on teaching about Jesus going to the cross. We're in Mark chapter 12, verse 35, and we're in the Amplified. Right. We're working with the Amplified, Mark 35. Um, let's take it, see where it takes us. Now, this, this has uh, the extra wording of definitions and uh, uh, let's call them embellishments of certain verses uh, built right into it. So this may explain it, explain the whole controversy right up front. Uh, starting 35, Jesus began to say, as he taught in a portico or court of the temple, how can the scribe say that Christ is the son of David? Okay, let's pause David, there. Let's pause okay. there. Um, how can we say this? Well, the Jews have 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 been since since the prophecies from David's time and since the prophecies from uh, Abraham's time have looked forward to a Messiah with lineage. Um, and Jesus has lineage, and otherwise he could not be the Christ if he was not a deep descendant of David's. And so, uh, how can how can the scribes how can the scribes? It's an interesting phrase in there. Say that Christ is the son of David, and uh, how can the scribes say that? And the answer is. The scribes can say that because in this case, they have the scripture right that Jesus is a descendant of David. Uh, yeah, the controversy is between uh, what the scribes wrote and what David himself said when inspired by the Holy Spirit. The scribes right. said uh, the Christ is the son of David. And, and what they're saying there is that he is in the lineage of David. He is a descendant, a genetic, uh, biological descendant of uh, uh, David. Yes. Uh, David himself says, when inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Lord, that is the Father, let me read it right here from uh, the Amplified, the Father, Lord, said to my Lord, the Son, sit at my right hand 
okay, the son of the Messiah, sit at my right hand, son, until I put your enemies under your feet. Yes. David himself calls him the son, the Messiah, okay? So David is calling uh, the son of God, the, the father's son, who's the son of God, Jesus, uh, the Messiah, um, son, uh, the son of the Messiah, is Lord, David's Lord. So his descendant, who is his antecedent up the um, family tra chain, so to speak, is also his Lord. Yes. And that's how it can be that he is David's son. That's um, right. The, uh, yeah, so they, that, I mean, that's, that's what resolves the issue. Uh, we can see it in retrospect. Yeah. Having... You know, the entire um, ministry of, of Jesus, um, but the scribes, of course, hadn't had that perspective uh, because Jesus hadn't yet to complete his ministry. That's right. Um, so, so that's why they a had large crowd enjoyed hearing Jesus and listened to him with delight, which is a fascinating contrast to how the scribes and Pharisees were listening to him. They were listening to him with rage, indignation, uh, frustration. How amazing that contrast is. But one of the, I'm still getting a background noise. I don't know what that is. Um, I don't hear it. Okay, good. It's at my end then. I don't know how to fix it. Anyway, the uh, the Lord is the Lord. And the 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 way lineages work, the the father is the head of the son. Never in the scriptures is the son the head of the father. Now, if you yeah. tell me about Joseph and Pharaoh, Joseph is the legal ruler, second in command in, in Egypt, but his father is still his father. His father is still the one in authority. And Pharaoh tries to take on um, Joseph's father and put him in his place. But Joseph's father was... Uh, resoundingly keeps his place in in power and so uh so it's remarkable for david to say my my lineage will have my lord um, because david is king and so you think how can a king have a lord and the answer is because the lord is the lord the messiah uh how amazing this this passage is and how common this thought is among scribes and Pharisees, Jewish leaders, and Jewish Jewish common folks. Um, Jewish regular folks knew that that the Messiah would come from David, from the lines of David or whatever. And so, uh, so here we have the promise of God quoted from David to the scribes, Pharisees, and to the crowd that and quoting the scribes themselves as saying, David will have in his lineage the Messiah. So, right. so the yeah. qualifications for Jesus to be Messiah includes, there's a number of them, but includes for him to be born in Bethlehem of the line of David, of the lineage of, uh, of the lineage of, and the lineage of, and that he will be, uh, 173,880 days from the from the prophecy um, so that all of these things are pushing the view forward that Jesus is the Messiah. And the crowd is going wild with this. Like Jesus has just taken on the Pharisees and embarrassed them. And now he has quoted the Pharisees and the scribes back at them to to prove once again that he is indeed the Christ. Right. Yeah, the yes, the uh the issue is uh that uh that this uh, uh, addresses is that Jesus has a dual nature. He's human yes. and divine. Amen. That, that's what's issue. That's this is why they they couldn't resolve it. They didn't recognize the divinity of the Messiah. This is why they yes. got stuck on this question. And this is what gets resolved here, um, because he has his dual nature. He, yes. This situation has come about, so it's a it's an important resolution. Uh, yes. It's not just um, 
um, it's not just a, 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 a word game of sorts. It's uh, it's really <laughs> it settles the issue that G, that the Messiah has uh, two natures, and that's how this situation can come about. That's right. And how glorious on the way to the cross, Jesus takes the time to tell the crowds once again that he is David's son and the Messiah. Right. And then in contrast to that, verse 38, please. Yeah, verse 38, we um, we have a little uh, uh, a change in um, uh, topics here somewhat. Let's read it. And uh, starting in 38, yes. uh, again, this is the amplified version. Uh, in the course of his teaching, Jesus was saying, uh, so this is built into the same uh, teaching that uh, was going on previously. Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, displaying their prominence, and like to receive respectful greetings in the marketplace. And they love the chief seats in the synagogues and the places of distinction and honor at banquets. Yes. The scribes are the ones who devour, that is, confiscate widows' houses and offer long prayers for appearances sake uh, to impress others, okay? These men will receive greater condemnation. Some versions say the greatest condemnation. Okay, so here we have, we have a chapter where they try and trap him with the Caesar thing. They ask him, what is the greatest commandment of all? They go through this long rambling discussion with, with seven with seven brothers and one and one widow and and he teaches them and, and we're on the way to the cross we're we're either tuesday or wednesday in holy week and we're coming into we're coming into the uh we're coming into passover in the city the city is starting to swell with population because passover is a required uh holiday for people to go to jerusalem live so, and he tells them, I am the Messiah, I am of the line of David, just like your scribes say. But watch out for scribes, because <laughs> they like to walk around in long robes, and they like to receive respectful greetings in the marketplace, and they love the chief seats in the synagogue, and places of distinguishes and honor the banquet. These scribes devour widows' houses and offer long prayers for appearance sake, to oppress others. These men will receive greater condemnation. Now, yeah. now Jesus is not teaching don't respect your don't respect your leadership. He is saying if the leadership is hypo hypocritical, th that's a great curse upon them. That they take that they take widows' houses away because they know the law and the widows don't know the law. And and they the, the, everything that they do is for show. They right. never do a good deed without letting everybody know what a good deed they just did, and and how how for and they offer long prayers for appearance sake to impress others. These men will receive great condemnation. Right. Jesus says elsewhere, "Beware of the leaven." Yeah. The scribes, the sin of the private of, of uh, the scribes and Pharisees, which is uh, hypocrisy, which is based in pride. That's right. Uh, the pride that they, uh, that they are uh, steeped in that causes their stumble. And Amen. Uh, uh, pride is the deadliest of sins, and these men will receive the greater con condemnation. Amen. Let's try 41. And again, we're changing gears, but not really. Yep, yet another topic, uh, the widow's might. Uh, and this has two varying interpretations, but let's That's take, right. uh, let's, uh, let's start uh, verse 41, Mark 12, 41, Amplified. And he sat down uh, opposite the temple treasury and began watching how the people were putting money into the treasury. So Jesus is watching the uh, gifts to the, the tithes, the offerings, uh, going into the treasury, and many rich people were putting in large sums. Okay, let's pause there. If I understand giving in the temple, they were they were things that had a funnel, like a metal 
trumpet thing, upside down trumpet. And so when you put your, excuse me, when you put your coins in, it went king, 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 king. And everybody go, whoa, that was a big gift because it went, because you had heavy coins and you threw them in such a way that everybody knew that you had just given substantially. And the, and the, and the widow, so, so it was a very public show of how much you're giving. There was no way to sneak your giving in. I guess there were, but people didn't choose to sneak their giving in. Nowadays, people can give online and you don't know what they're giving or they can give in church and, and they, they fold up their checks so you don't know what they're giving uh, or they they put their pennies in, which is fine. And so um, so people were putting in large sums. Why? Because this, because they liked the show of that, first of all. But secondly, they were trained that they were responsible for the blessing of the temple of God Almighty. And so what a what a joy to give to God. Um, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And again, not just a hypo hypocritical giver, but a, but a heartfelt giver who truly loves giving to the Lord because of the blessing that God has poured out. And we're commanded to give to the Lord. We're also commanded to take care of the poor, but we're commanded to give to the poor. 42. Yeah. This method of giving, too, also pointed out those who don't give as much. Yes. Uh, and, uh, that comes into uh, question as well. Um, yes. So uh, picking up in 42, having seen those uh, wealthy putting their large sums, a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which amount to a mite. This is very close to what we call a mill today. It's not, it's not even coined. Um, it's one tenth of a cent. The, a, a mite is approximately one eighth of a cent. So it, just virtually nothing. Less than okay. And, and just imagine the visual on this. The rich guy goes in, clang, 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 and the widow goes in, tink, tink. I mean, this is a this is an incredibly auditory um, visual representation of what's happening between the rich people that are giving of their own and the poor woman. Right. So calling his disciples to him, he said to them. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, that would be verily, verily in the New yes. King James, King James uh, this poor widow put in proportionally more than all the contributors to the treasury. For they all contributed from their surplus, but she, from her poverty, put in all she had, all she had to live on. Okay, so, so I, uh, I was watching one of the commentaries and they said a widow's might is two or three days income for a widow in the culture so so for the next two or three days she can't eat she can't buy she can't sell um the other way to think about this is this is this is her last pennies um so i don't know how to go with that but we know that the lord jesus complimented that kind of giving to her. Um, yeah, we were at a funeral one day, and, and the daughter said, "My mom tried to prove that uh, that she couldn't outgive God, but she sure came close sometimes." <laughs> and you think, "Wow, how amazing that testimony is from the daughter." Yeah. So, yeah, well, we how Jesus gave his all, gave yes. his entire life. Um, in that context, we, there, there is a parallel here, obviously, to uh, the widow giving all that she had to live on. She gave, in a sense, her life. Yes. Um, the, the thing of it is, though, that if you read this passage carefully, it, is, uh, it can be interpreted simultaneously as a rebuke of the, uh, those that, uh, of the temple put, who put pressure on people to give. Yes. To more than they can they can afford to give. That's right, and that's uh, that uh, comes to light here as well. But I think, and, the and particularly because in the previous passage, they said that uh, you know, the gift of Christ through the cross 
uh, is I think uh, for me, that's what reflects in the widow's heart that she had a heart similar to the Lord to want to give all. That's right. And, and we see what Rich just said in the previous paragraph where the, where the scribes and Pharisees were stealing from the widows and, and taking their homes. Um, so, but I don't think this is, I don't think this is a forced giving on her part. I think that this is a loving giving on her part. Uh, yes, right. On the other hand, you know, you hear tales all the time about uh, people who are writing checks they can't really afford to write uh, to yeah. give to causes that uh, aren't all that on the up and up, be it uh, Christian or otherwise. So Right. And we had a story of a woman in our church who we loved for decades, and she would take her her social security check or SSI check, whatever it was, and made sure that this televangelist got his money so he could maintain his $350 million waterfront property. Just, it made me sick, but she was, she would go without food so she could make sure to put that check in the mail for him. And it just, it just baffled me that, uh, you know, good and godly women understood prayer, understood discernment, but she was connected with this televangelist who was not not how, living how I would want him to live. Yeah. Okay. So what an amazing chapter. If we think about this chapter again, we're going to the cross. We have we have not had seder dinner yet, but we have had numerous teachings, and we have not had an army uprise taking over Jerusalem like the triumphant entry thought them. We got a parable of a vineyard owner. We've got a statement about the stone and uh, paying taxes, about these brothers all marrying the widow, and about the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And then we've got the uh, David is has a lineage that includes the Lord Jesus. And then we have a challenge. Don't let these people, for appearance sake, um, take advantage of you. And then we end with the widow giving all that she had. Amazing chapter. Um, maybe, maybe two days or maybe one day in the life of the Lord Jesus on the way to the cross. Entirely different than how worldly people take, take their uh, coming into, into power. Amen. Lord, we thank you for these words. We thank you for this being the Lord's day. We'd ask that souls would be saved, bodies be healed, and families be restored. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yes, thank you again, Lord. Your word, your spirit, uh, and the truth that comes forth in so many ways uh, that you actually died for uh, and that can be that the, the multiple ways that that is true uh, seeks to amaze and in its in a, uh, how profound that that uh, concept is but that's what this is coming to and we appreciate your insights so much especially in these troubled times that uh, we see so much coming to pass uh, that is could very well be fulfillment, although quite often we don't see it until uh, the situation is completed. But yeah, we'll, we, we pray for your continued leading uh, to keep us uh, alert as you would uh, have us be uh, to the uh, changes in the world, the things that are happening about us. Uh, we pray for your guidance with each situation. Uh, that we may ultimately live lives that are glory to you. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. Have a blessed Lord's Day, all. Bye.